Yo, BJ, very basic Bible. I had it down. Had it, we're gonna um go through some Bible passages. <clears throat> okay, share screen. So I am preaching this Sunday. Um, preach a few times a year at smaller churches. Uh, smaller churches that don't have a pastor or a um that would say a part-time pastor maybe one pastor that does multiple churches maybe they have a pastor for a little while and then that pastor gets moved then they have a pastor for a little while and then that pastor gets moved so in between it, it, it's common with small churches that are in a bigger institution. So I'm, so I'm a member of the United Methodist Church, though I don't necessarily hold all the Methodist distinctions, but overall, pretty much. But you only got to affirm, like, um, like to be a member of the United Methodist Church, you, you say, I will uphold the church with my prayers, my presence, my gift, and my witness to Jesus. That's pretty easy to do. I mean, <laughs> Pretty easy to, well, yeah, anybody can do that. Um, then I get to become a lay speaker, get to go around and preach. Um, and my wife has been going to a Methodist church since she was teeny tiny. You know, when you're a kid and you just join a church, you don't know what it's about, really. It's good that we got in a church where that you don't have to um, affirm all sorts of all everything thing that's like very particular and specific and it must be this way and because no i i couldn't do that i i feel weird even being part of the method the united method church but but hey prayers presence gifts and witness i mean yeah that's pretty simple um so got small churches in this institution but you're not just going to go out and just hire a pastor you're not just going to ask people to preach no no no. the institution provides the pastors so you got a small church that doesn't can't retain a pastor that doesn't necessarily need a full-time pastor but you can't go get your own pastor gotta wait for the institution yeah it's you know so i help out <clears throat> gonna preach this sunday okay that uh Three and a half minutes of the United Methodist Church was free. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to preach at my uh, friend's church. I'm a lady who um, lives with my mother-in-law. She's taking a break. I'm going to preach. She said last time she preached on. Let's go find it. Let's just look at Bible Gateway. John 21. No, 20. Yeah. Jom. Look at that. Jom. John. I typed in Jom in the search bar. John 20. John chapter 20, the empty tomb. If you go down, Jesus is among his disciples. If you go down, why is it got? Oh, oh, here we go. I'm going to start at verse 19. We're just going to read it. This is a NESB, I believe. If you look up in the... Uh, you go to Bible Gateway, you're like, wait, which Bible translation am I in? I forgot. Look at the uh, the web address bar. It says BibleGateway.com slash passage slash this, that, random, NASB. Okay, NASB. It says that up in the internet address search bar here. All right, here we go. Verse 19, John chapter 20. This is what Pastor preached on last time. Now it was evening on, on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut, where the disciples were together due to fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be to you. Doors were shut, and he appears. Supposed to be kind of like, wait, how'd he get in there? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Also, due to fear, and Jesus is like, Peace be to you. Come on. Kind of neat, huh? When he said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. And they were probably a bit freaked out. Whoa, dude, you were dead. 
I mean, they were hiding for fear of the Jews. Not necessarily because they thought he was dead. Because some of them were like, wait, did he rise? Hmm, you know, Peter and John, they were like, huh, kind of scratching their head. And they were like, well, he said he'd rise. Some of well, then he's like, I'm going to prove to you that this is who I am. Holes in my hands. Hole in my side where the guy pierced me. It's me. And they're, the disciples didn't rejoice when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, peace be to you. Excellent. Peace be to you. Jesus continues. Just as the Father has sent me, I also send you. Common theme in the book of John. Jesus is like, I was sent from heaven. I came from heaven and was sent by my father. My father sent me. I only do what I see the father doing. Jesus says stuff like that over and over again. In the book of John, I come down from heaven. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. <clears throat> Sorry. So Jesus says, hey, look. Just as the father has sent me, I also send you. So Jesus is sending them out into the world. And when he said, said this, now this is strange. He breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, disciples have been following dude for three years. Uh, we that That's usually the estimate, right? Three years. No, this, you look at the feasts he went to, the Jewish feasts that are you know, once a year. There, there are multiple feasts, and each one is once a year. So you look at all the feasts and you go, okay, he went to three, I think, Passover feasts. So, you know, three years. Some people say, wait, one of them went to Passover. It might not have been three. I've been following them for a few years. And they're just now receiving the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts, Peter preaches to Cornelius and his household. Cornelius is a Gentile. Got a bunch of Gentiles. Peter preaches to him. They receive the Holy Spirit. Right then, then Peter's like, hey, we got to get these guys baptized. Look. Paul, the apostle, he's up in Ephesus. He sees some disciples of John the Baptist. Yeah, John the Baptist disciples. John the Baptist long dead long ago, but way up, really far away from Jerusalem in Ephesus. Ephesus really far. Paul's like, uh, what are you doing? And they're like, we're disciples of John. Paul preaches in the gospel, baptizes them lays his hands on them. Then they start speaking in tongues and receive the Holy Spirit. The disciples at Pentecost, Ch Acts chapter 2. I almost said chaps, Acts there too. Chaps, Acts. Acts chapter 2. Disciples are uh, in the upper room. They're praying like crazy. Then suddenly, violent wind. You know, they they the Spirit came down like a violent wind. Fire looking things lands on each of their head. They start speaking in are they receiving the spirit then? Did they not have it? You know? <clears throat> the Samaritans. Philip. He goes, not the, not the apostle, apparently some uh, an evangelist or a deacon. Acts chapter 4, 5, 6. Sometime in it. He goes down to Samaria, preaches to Samaritans. Now Samaritans and Jews, no likey. They receive the gospel. Word gets back to Jerusalem. Peter and John come up there and go, whoa, they did receive the gospel. They lay their hands on them and pray. Then they receive the spirit. So wait, what's going on here? The Samaritans received the spirit after accepting the gospel. Um, and after the apostles lay their hands on them, Cornelius received, and his family received the spirit just after being preached the gospel before any hands are laid on them. Before I even get he didn't get baptized yet. Um, these disciples, they got preached to, baptized, hands laid, the, the guys up in Ephesus. Then they received the Spirit. You know, Paul preaches, hands, uh, uh, baptizes, lays hands in the Spirit. It's like, what or, what's the order? Here it says Jesus breathes on them, receive the Holy Spirit. But then in Acts 2, Holy Spirit comes down and lands on them. Is that when they're receiving? Like, There's another monkey wrench. Okay. So, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. Verse 23. If you have forgiven the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. Sounds like Jesus is giving the apostles. Let me see. The disciples. 
I believe it's just the apostles because, but Thomas was one of the twelve. Maybe there were some, maybe there were more than twelve disciples in there. And 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 Thomas, yeah. And uh so the disciples would include the, the twelve apostles. We're now eleven because Judas, you know, hang himself. Uh, <laughs> that's a little crass. So it seems the apostles or disciples, I'm thinking disciples, I'm thinking there's more than just 12 of them in there hiding out. Um, could be wrong, but you know, why not? You love Jesus enough. You're not necessarily enough, this, an apostle, but you are a disciple. Jesus chose 12 to become apostles. He didn't be like, if anybody wants to follow me, no, he chose 12 to be his apostles. There are other people that were following him as disciples. Why wouldn't they show up, you know, and, and go into there with the apostles? Kind of my thought. Um, anyway, they're in there. Jesus gives them the authority to. He said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. So we can like Jesus apostles or Jesus' disciples, anybody who follows Jesus. If you forgive the sins, their sins have been forgiven them. It's pretty awesome. It's not just like, okay, I forgive you. It's, I forgive you. God has forgiven you. Has forgiven you. That's it's pretty cool, you know. I'm a disciple. Uh, go to somebody who sinned against me and i'm like hey i forgive you uh, uh, our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come that will be done this is the lord's prayer right on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us yes i just finished the lord's prayer leads not to temptation but delivers from evil or the evil one evil the evil one uh for that is the kingdom the power the glory forever and ever amen I like this. Forgiveness of sins. Now here's the part that gets everybody. This stuff's weird up here. You know, I didn't even talk about the forgiveness of sins. Some denominate Catholics, Lutherans, Orthodox believers, like Eastern Orthodox. Um, some are like, well, you have to be an apostle. The apostles can forgive sins. They literally have the power to literally forgive sins. And it's a special mystical power. And it's the apostles passed down to other apostolic succession. Have you ever heard of it? That's like the Catholic Church and the Anglican and, a, a, you, you know, like that. I didn't even get into that. I'm just getting into trying to keep it simple. Okay. We should be forgiving each other. We should be rejoicing because Jesus is there. Look, peace be to you. Come on, guys. He showed us it. He proved it was him. Here's my hands. Here's my side. All right. Verse 24. But Thomas, one of the 12, who was called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Where was he? After the crucifixion, it did say the disciples who were with him scattered took off got scared ran away so i mean they could just be anywhere thomas happened not to be with them maybe there were other disciples and or apostles who weren't with them but you know we know we know thomas wasn't there it doesn't say all the other apostles were. i think it's kind of assumed that they were the apostles minus thomas i where were i don't all right so the other disciples were saying to thomas we have seen the lord but thomas said to them I don't know why. Okay, so he told them all he was going to raise, be raised, be risen. I'm not sure. They they doubted though. Unless I see, here's what Thomas says. Unless I see his hands, the imprint of the nails. In unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. So just like he showed up here, verse um, 20, he showed them his hands in the side. Thomas is like, unless I see his hands inside and can touch it. I'm not going to believe it's him because they're looking for a physical resurrection. They're not looking for a ghost. Thomas is like, I look, he's dead. 
his his ghost, his angel, his spirit appears. Oh, okay, man, I don't. He's right, risen from the dead physically. That's the hope of the Jews. So Thomas is waiting for. Uh, Jesus talked about that in the Lazarus story with Mary and Martha. They're Mary, Mary and or Martha. It's like, I know he will raise at the end of time. You know, I know Lazarus will eventually raise someday. Um, and then Jesus raises Lazarus right then. <laughs> uh, so the disciples slash apostles get breathed on receive the holy spirit are they literally receiving it? it or is this more symbolic metaphorical did jesus only give them to be able to forgive sins and oh sorry thomas you can't do it yeah you can tell somebody you're forgiven but um it doesn't really count thomas wasn't there did he receive he just eight days later so that, that's another kink if this whole Holy Spirit thing is like, like that's when they got saved or something like that, you know, they were all, they were all pretty much priests because they could forgive sin. Oh, it's ever Tom. What? Verse 26, eight days later, his disciples were getting inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, of course. So Jesus came, the doors having been shut and stood in their midst and said, peace be to you. That's what he said last time, twice. You get a drink of water. <clears throat> lots of coughing today as i mowed my mother-in-law's lawn yesterday and the day before Ugh. should wear a mask a face mask or something we all got used to that with covid anyways and i work at a um job not work i volunteer where my wife works she works at adults she works at a place that employs adults with special needs they do uh clay work take clay you pound it down, get all the air and stuff out of it, make it nice and flat, roll it, you cut it up. Then we give it to other people. They put pretty decorations, patterns on it. Then other people, they put this glaze stuff on it. It's not paint, it's glaze, and they, they burn it, and then they sell it. Pretty cool, huh? They do other stuff. But So I, I've gotten used to wearing a mask because all the clay dust, the COVID clay dust and mowing the clawing, the lawn. <laughs> But I digress. <laughs> Jesus is there. This time Thomas is with him. Then Jesus said to Thomas. Then Jesus breathed on Thomas and said, hey, I'm going to now give you the right to forgive sins. He doesn't go through all that again. Instead, what does he say? Place your finger here. See my hands. And take your hand and put it in my side. <coughs> Do not continue in disbelief, but be a believer. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to Thomas, because you've seen me, have you now believed? Blessed are they who did not see, yet believe. Pretty cool, huh? The next, the next verse might help clue us in what's going on. It's not primarily talking about receiving the spirit or forgiveness of sins. This is primarily about Jesus appears to them. Wait, really? And it's really Jesus. He's giving them the spirit. He's telling them to go forgive people of their sins. He's saying, hey, look, it's really me. I mean, this is stuff Jesus would do. Thomas, you can't believe it. Sorry, guys. Then Jesus appears. He gives them the proof. Look at my hands. Look at my side. Verse 20, verse 30, verse 30. So then many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written so that, drum roll please, you may forgive others of their sins. You may receive the spirit. I mean, okay. So that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. I assume when you have life in his name, you get the spirit. The spirit is with you. I assume you can legitimately forgive other people. You're not just like, I forgive you, but kind of hold a grudge. I forgive you, but I don't really mean it. No, no. I mean, like, I forgive you. 
you know. Pretty cool stuff. In the Old Testament, they're like, I forgive you. Okay, now let's take this animal sacrifice and go and sacrifice. Wait, what? You know, no, there's a big lot. Now, Jesus dies, rises. Hey, guess what? You can forgive. Dude. Awesome. And, I mean, you have the spirit. I'm sure this is to be understood that Thomas and any disciple that wasn't there, they, they ran off somewhere. They, you know, any disciple that was truly a disciple. You know, they get spirit, they can forgive sins, all that stuff. I mean, just seems to make sense. And Jesus, look, these signs have been written so you may believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that by believing you may have life in his name. Awesome. That's what was preached on last week. Now, of course, this is my take. I've laid out two or three, you know, I've said, well, maybe this, well, maybe that, you know, uh, the lady who preached was like, actually, there were only 10 disciples because of Judas. And I was like, oh, I never thought about that. Well, now I'm going, but wait a minute. Was it just the 12 minus Judas and Thomas? So just 10. Or was it a lot of disciples? See, so I'm, you know, you know, we're not going to know till we get into heaven and ask questions, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, if, if we care about that stuff in heaven and see why not. We can get all the details we want, you know. But for now, we just say, hey, this is most likely what it is. Here's maybe what it is. We try to not say stupid things. <laughs> so, uh, even, you know, Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have now believed. Blessed are those who see you not believe. Therefore, Thomas wasn't blessed. He didn't get the spirit. Wait, what? You know, I'm I'm assuming that's not it. Um, <laughs> if God can forgive people in the Old Testament, without sacrifices who did horrendous acts god can forgive us for this for stress and such like tom said now the passage for this week vanderbilt vander b I, yeah, okay, you a minute. Right here, revised common lectionary. See, I typed it in up at the top. Revised common lectionary. It's called Vanderbilt. Built is spelled like, hey, let's go build something. He built, he built that. B U I L T. Well, Vanderbilt is like B I L T. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody's name, Vanderbilt. You know? Allen. My last name is A L L E N or A L E N or A L A N or A L L A N or. This is what I mean. I guess it could be like, a-L-I-N. Allen, A-E-L-E-N. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Uh, since I'm preaching, go to the lectionary, grab a scripture verse. Now, I can, like, preach on whatever I want. But I find it fun to grab a scripture and make myself preach on that. <laughs> makes me... <sighs> makes actually have to think about it. And not just like, oh, I picked my favorite thing. Now, I could do that, but this is... You know, maybe I'll do that if you maybe we'll read Balaam's donkey. That was yeah, that's one of my favorite stories now. All right, all right. Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Holy Week, Easter. It's Easter time right now, right? Not Lent anymore. Easter, um, is that Jesus eyes? Is that Mary? Oh okay. April twenty oh twenty twenty four. Wait, what? Oops. Oh, year A. I went to year B, 23, 24. Year A, 22, 23. Okay. Easter. April 23rd. Prayer. See, today's the 19th. This Sunday be the 23rd. Acts 2, 14a, and then 36 through 41. Psalm 11, 16, 1 through 4, 12 through 19. I'm not sure why they break them up. It's tradition. First Peter 1, 17 through 24. Look at this. First Peter 1, 3 through 9. First Peter 17. First Peter 2. First Peter 2, 10. Uh, so so they're, they're, they're going through First Peter. Why? I'm not totally sure. I could learn like why the lectionary is the way it is, but um, we do know why it's Acts because it's after Easter. Acts happens just after Easter. Uh, Luke happens after easter luke 24 that's the road to emmaus he's walking 
He sees the disciples on the way to Emmaus. Everybody knows that story. I could do familiar Bible stories that we make, like we preach something new. But I, I'm going to preach instead on comparing what they got preached last week, which is Thomas. And this week, Acts 2, 14a, 36 through 41. I do know why they did Acts that way. I'm pretty sure. Like there's um, one part of the verse, uh, the, the sermon, one part of the sermon. There's another part of the sermon, right? No, I'd really just preach the whole sermon. But here, let's go. Acts. But Peter, taking his stand with the other eleven, raised his voice and declared to them. Now, what does he declare? All this stuff here. From the word men all the way down. He goes through a prophet in Joel. He goes through a prophecy in Joel. He says these things. Prophecy here or a psalm there. Way down here. So, that's actually not that much. Right? But what does the, the lectionary want me to preach on? 214a, 36 through 41. So we'll skip down to verse, chapter 2, verse 36. So 214a. But Peter, take, Peter? But Peter, taking his stand with the other 11, raised his voice and declared to them, that's 214a. Now we go down to... What is it again? 36. All right. What is Peter's? He took his, his stand and he declared to them with his voice. Therefore, so everything Peter just preached, this is the um, this is the finale because of all I said. So we don't hear all of what he said, but this is like his main point. I'm pretty certain. Kind of what I took away from it. Okay. Here we go. Verse 36, therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain. So Jew, Jew, Jews, the Jewish religion, let the, the house of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob's name is changed to Israel. Israel has the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes get called out of Egypt. They are made into a great nation under Moses in the wilderness. They conquer the promised land. They got to... They eventually get, you know, they have judges. They eventually get King Saul and then David. God makes a problem with David. They eventually, the northern kingdom gets into exile, but the southern kingdom is still there. Southern kingdom gets into exile, comes back. Jesus, they have their own nation. Jesus is born in the house of David, in the house of Israel, Jacob. They all come from Abraham. They come from God. Jews. Hey, hey Jews, look. Therefore, let the Jewish religion know for certain that God has made him, Jesus, both Lord and Christ. He's the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah, the guy they've been waiting for. And guess what? This is Jesus whom you crucified. How would you like to hear that? How would you like to? <laughs> he, he gives them this whole thing. This whole spill here about Jesus and what happened. And then, look, God has made him both Lord and Christ. The Jesus who you crucified. Okay. Thomas, Jesus appears in the room. Thomas isn't there. Jesus appears later. Hey, look, here I am. I've been crucified. See my hand, see my side. Blessed are you if you believe and don't, you know, if you don't see and you believe, okay? Peter here is like, hey, guys, look, it's Jesus who you crucified. He is the Messiah. He is Lord. A little different from Thomas, right? Thomas was already a follower of Jesus. Thomas had seen everything. Then he saw everything again. These people, not followers of Jesus. They're just the Jewish religion. They're just the people, the Jewish nations. The Jews who live in the nations. Um, they're just the Jews. Tom, uh, Jesus is like, hey, here I am, Thomas. It's me. Peter's saying, the guy you crucified, he's made Lord. Okay. How did the people react? How did Thomas write? Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Right? If you remember. We could go back, but that, that was Thomas's words. How did the people react? Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pierced. I'm going to look up. A, wounded in conscience. 
Okay. Pierced to the heart, wounded in conscience. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, so I guess all they were all there. Peter is preaching. That's there's a lot of people. They were where is it at? Down here, if you look. <clears throat> Verse 41, we're added about 3,000 souls. About 3,000. So, yeah. Hey, Peter, you know, it does everything. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> the rest of the apostles. Brothers, what are we to do? The Jews are pierced in their heart. Said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what are we to do? Peter said to them, uh, Jesus is going to show up and you're going to look at his hands and his side. He's going to breathe on you. And different than Thomas. Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So wait, the apostles were already baptized, right? I'm guessing they got baptized by John. It doesn't. It never says Jesus baptized them. In fact, Jesus got baptized by John. Um, Jesus was preaching, repent and believe the gospel. I'm assuming the apostles already repented. Thomas didn't necessarily have to repent. He had already repented. Is repentance an ongoing thing? Sure, but it's also, I follow this way of life, and now I'm following this way of life. I wasn't following Jesus, but just the generic Jewish religion. Now I'm following Jesus the Messiah. He is the Jewish religion, right? That the apostles make a turn there. Peter's like, hey guys, y'all repent. Y'all were following the ways, the Jewish religion, but here's Jesus the Christ. Follow him. Each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Not in the name of Israel, not in the name of David, not in your own name, in the name of Jesus. For the forgiveness of sins. Like Jesus said, they could, whatever sins you forgive, they've already been forgiven in heaven. Pretty cool. So all the people have to do is repent and they're forgiven. I mean, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Pretty cool. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. This promise is for everyone, guys, for you, for your children, every, I mean, and, and even people beyond. Peter, little does people, Peter know that later he's going to go to Samaritans. We talked about earlier. He's going to go to Gentiles, Romans. The promise is even for them. We go all the way to verse 42, right? Let's see. Oh, 41, 36 through 41. And with many other words, Peter solemnly testified, and he kept on urging them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Yep. Uh, uh, perverse generation. The Jews, they don't like Jesus. They tried to crucify, they crucified Jesus. Peter's like, hey, be saved from this perversion. Jesus called them a wicked and adulterous generation. <laughs> That's all of us at heart, right? I mean, I'm glad Jesus cleansed my black heart, made it white as snow. And he washed me white as snow. 41. So then, those who had received his word, so some didn't. Some didn't. It says, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart. All of them, I think it's general. They generally, right? There were lots of people there, lots of people listening to him. If you go back and you read, it was a feast day. Hundreds of thousands of Jews probably are there. That's what I've heard. I heard people say there's probably a few hundred thousand Jews because they come from all over the known world, all over the, the Mediterranean, you know, down, down as far as Egypt and probably over from way over from the Middle East. You know, they all come to Jerusalem, everybody, all the Jews. I mean, I mean, a lot of them, I just swarming with Jews. A lot of Jews are listening to Peter preach right now. Many of them got saved. Yes. So then those who had received his word and were baptized. Oh, those who had received his word were baptized. And filled with the spirit. Wait, it doesn't tell us that part. Up here, Jesus, Peter says, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. At to my phone. You notice how how sometimes it um it 
emphasizes one thing. Uh, Jesus says, Jesus doesn't tell them to be baptized. He breathes on them, says you can forgive sins, and you receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, here, Peter up here says, uh, repent each of you and get baptized. Then you will receive the Holy Spirit. You notice like different things are emphasized. If we go to other passages where Peter's preaching, he just emphasizes repentance. He just emphasizes Jesus. Everything isn't always emphasized and not always in the same way. Like we said, Samaritans were, uh, uh, Cornelius was, um, Samaritans repented and were baptized. They didn't receive the spirit yet. Cornelius wasn't even baptized and received the spirit in his family. So, I mean, different things happen in different ways. Preach generically. Peter's preaching approximately, you're going to get the spirit. Let's get you baptized, get you set apart, sanctified. Let's see. Be saved from this perverse generation, 3,000 souls. That's a little different than Thomas. Thomas just seems already saved. These people wandering around. Thomas knows Jesus is the Messiah, pretty much. These people, they have no clue, right? Thomas is one out of many that already knows Jesus. These people, they killed Jesus. He says they... Of course, the Jews that came from very far away to come to this feast, they didn't kill Jesus necessarily, I don't think. Actually, the Jews would have come from very far away to a feast. And then like a month later, a month, a month and a half, there's another feast. So it might have been the same Jews. So if they all come for both feasts, I mean, they were there like shouting Hosanna. Then they were there shouting crucify him. But different Jews come at different times. Some Jews might have been at one you know you know not the other i mean i mean we tend to look at this like they did it and we they they all of them no. it's more generic than that it's always more generic than that <clears throat> well guys um i gotta go to work i think i've talked through it enough i'll have to think about exactly what i want to say i'll try and remember to uh record the sermon when i do put it online hopefully all right we'll see you guys i have a friend who texted me about something important it seems and i gotta go to work <laughs> pray that you would receive the holy spirit that you would repent of your sins and that you could uh, preach to others and receive life in his name amen see you on the next very basic bible